All right. What is happening, people? So, hey, today, you never know what wildlife adventures will be up to. So today, I am on the Eno River, and I have Kelsey with me, and I am helping the Wildlife Resources Commission collect some white bass today. So Kelsey is our District 5 Inland Fisheries Biologist, and they have been down for the last week or so trying to collect some white bass. And I'm gonna let Kelsey tell you why they are trying to collect these bass and what they're doing to these bass in order to track them on their migrations in and out of the river system. That's a nice one. Yes, sir. Nice right there, y'all. Woo, doggy boy. Wildlife adventures, that's how we roll. That's right. Um, so, like you said, I'm Kelsey. Um, we are starting a project where we're going to be um, surgically implanting acoustic telemetry tags. Ooh, I couldn't even say that word. <laughs> into um, white bass that are about <clears throat> 9 to 14 inches. And then we are going to be putting an array of receivers through the Eno and the Flat River. And we'll have a few in the Falls Lake, but we're not really trying to track them in the lake. Um, we're primarily trying to track them um, as they make their spawning migrations up the rivers. Mm -hmm. So what we're interested in is, you know, what environmental cues make them, um, you know, initiate their spawning migrations. You know, typically they'll stage for some, some time. And then what, what is it that makes them want to want to start their run? And then once, you know, once they're in the river, we can track like their daily movements. We can um, track if they make multiple spawning migrations. We can um, identify what habitat they're selecting for, what type of flow conditions are optimal. And we can really just sort of hone in on um, what these white bass are using during their spawning migrations. And so that's going to help us to a, be able to better sample them in the future, but also um, be able to provide, you know, anglers maybe who are not as familiar with white bass runs or mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. who are just looking for a little more information um, with with that data. Mm -hmm. So, we're hoping and so will. hopefully we can catch some fish, and I'll show you guys how they implant those receivers. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> inside of them. So it's very foggy as you can see today, and we have. Two other boats that's with us, they're further up the river. We came down the river and we have marked some fish down in the 13 to 15 foot range. Great. That's it. Oh, there he is. Throw over there towards that bank. Over there. Oh, that looks like a big one. Bigger. Bigger. Is that your first cast? Yeah. Sometimes it's like it. That's usually how it is if they bite. There you go. And it's shallow, just work it back. You should catch one. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, you need a netting? Hold on, you need a netting. Oh, I'm glad I put a new line on that. Woo, that's a nice one. Oh, sorry, are you getting the net out? Yeah, I was gonna net him. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Golly. Yes. 12? I'm going to say 14. You think it's 14? Yep. Wow, you're right. I must have been seeing a lot of big fish yesterday. Or two days ago. Yeah. Cool. He's almost 15 inches, won't you? Yeah. Nice. That's pretty big. That's nice. Yeah. Right, right back. So... So they just called it, the electrofishing boat just called us and said they got into a bunch of white bass further on up the Eno River. So 
anyway we've come back to the dock and we need to work these fish up and actually put these uh, these trackers inside of them so we're gonna all get tied up here in just a few minutes and uh, anyway we're gonna see how that's done hey stay with us you want to back the truck in So you hit a big pot of them and got 10 like at one time? <laughs> Apparently. Really? I'm not sure if we, but yeah, I'm Casey. I'm Sam Sink. Nice How you doing, Casey? You. Nice to meet you. Yeah, there was a good bit. Um, we had like a few, and then, yeah, we turned into that little river. There was one like right at the opening, and then like two more at the opening, oh, shoot. and then like seven. What'd you wait so long to get them for? Uh, I know, that's, that's what I, that's what I <laughs> told Kelsey. I said, what'd you wait so long to get them for? I know. We comes, it'll be there, we can. Yeah. Ben the anchor man. What's that, Sam? Ben the anchor man. Dipped him, he got him. I told Casey we must be the common denominators. Seth was with us last week. Yeah. Got lucky. Hey. We ate a little pocket of them. And, I mean, Boom. Mm -hmm. Was it in that little other little creek up there that comes in on the Eno? Uh, the little. You know, I've never been able to get my boat that high. Really? It's always been debris up there. That's why I always usually get up to flat. Yeah. We actually cut the tree out of the way in the flat last year. Uh -huh. We brought a chainsaw with us. Yeah, you can probably do that. Get the biggest ones, probably. Is. That's one of the Yeah. 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 How do you know when it goes to sleep? It floats to the top? And what is that called? Um, aqueous. Yeah. It's basically just club oil. Uh, and a, aquatic antiseptic. Oh, you're filming right now. Yeah. Um, you ready? Yeah, he ain't moving now. Alright, let's do it. Same with the him. Male. I got fired. 316. Go ahead. 316. 478. So right now I'm just removing the scales so that my scalpel doesn't get stuck in them, sutures don't get stuck in them. Fish sutures. have a slight tummy ache. Alright, and this is what you said you could do for me if you hooked me in the head, right? That's right. Mm -hmm.
Two sutures or three? Three wrap. So it's got to have it. So it's got to have right. This is essentially the same as what so. you put in dogs to like keep track of your dog or your cat. Okay, so it's got all the information mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. And that's the one. These are a little less fancy. They just have like a number associated with them, gotcha. and then we know that number. Correct. Which I, gotcha. I think that's actually the same as what the dogs have. It's just it just a number comes up. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Um, a number comes up, and then we know what that number is associated with. Okay. And. You know, one of the reasons the commission's been focusing a lot of efforts on white bass recently is because, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, some of the populations have you know, been declining over the last 10 years or they've just completely disappeared. Um, so our job as biologists is to you know, kind of figure out why they're declining, what, what could be causing um, these declines throughout the state. So a few of the a few of the things that we suspect um, would be you know, interactions with other invasive species such as white perch, which we, we see out here in the Eno, um, you know, competition for resources with those fish, uh, mortality, whether it's you know, natural or high fishing mortality, and then also um, just you know, something to do environmentally that we're just unaware about. So those are kind of the three mechanisms that we're looking into um, and with my research we found that there was a significant amount of fishing mortality especially during the springtime which I'm sure you can right. imagine right. seeing a lot of people out here fishing today um, but we also saw that most of their natural mortality occurred during this time of year too so these fish are under a tremendous amount of stress mm -hmm. from spawning and then they're also getting hit hard by all the anglers mm -hmm. Um, and so another thing that concerned us was that all of these populations were severely age truncated. So, you know, this is a fish that can live up to 14 years in oh, some, wow. some northern wow. states and, you know, possibly up to seven or eight years down here. And we were hardly seeing any fish above four and barely any fish that were four. And so these, these fish don't mature until they're one um, for females. They don't always mature until they're two and so you know they're reaching 12 14 inches before they're even um, you know sexually mature so they're being removed from the system before they can spawn and that just kind of limits the robustness so they have you know if you have a bad few years of recruitment and you only have fish living to be about three, well then you're relying on just one year to bring basically the whole population back. And that was one of the reasons the commission made the move to well, put the size limit at 14 inches. Is that correct? That's right. So the, the 14 inches, well our, our main goal with this regulation change is to just create more robust populations, kind of slow that growth down, create a fishery that has more older fish in it so that they can be more robust whether you know if there's a drought several years and right. they're not able to have a good spawning run you know we'll, we know that there they'll still be older fish in the system. One of the things that we we've, uh, we've saw uh, an, an adult white perch will look very similar to a white bass and a lot of the anglers uh, even myself sometimes find that difficult for a juvenile white bass. And so you voice your concerns that some people are keeping the juvenile white bass thinking that they are white perch. And I notice it's difficult for me when the water gets dingy and they begin to change some colors for me to even tell. But there's uh, some differences in the dorsal fins, there's some differences on the tongue that you can tell. So. Just tell us a little bit about the differences for people to look at so they're not keeping an illegal fish. 
That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't, don't want, want that, that to happen. I mean, you can keep as many white perch as you want. Right, but, right, exactly. Um, not if they're white bass. Not if they're white bass. Yeah. So here we have a small white bass. This is probably an age zero uh, white bass. So you can see it's got the <laughs> lateral line running down the middle of it. And then it's got at least one or two full stripes that run the full length of the fish. And then you get some broken stripes near the top and the bottom. So that's one way um, that you know it's a white bass is when it's got more stripes than just the lateral line. Mm -hmm. So then you can look inside the mouth. I don't know if you can see in there. And you can see their tongue patch in there. Well, you can't really see it, but if you stick your finger in there and you feel it, It'll feel kind of like sandpaper. Okay. So that's how you know it's got a tooth patch. Okay. So that's a, that's a small <laughs> white bass. <laughs> Here we have a white perch. This is a lar larger white perch, so kind of the same size as these juvenile age zero white bass. And right away, you can notice it kind of has an olive colored tint to it mm -hmm. as compared to a silvery bluish tint that most of the white bass have. And there's not really any lines on it. If you look closely, you can see the lateral line running down the middle, mm -hmm. but it's not always clearly defined and certainly not as defined as the white bass. When you look inside their mouths, you can feel again for that tooth patch and it's just gonna feel smooth. So it won't, you won't have any sandpaper feel at all. And that's really the main way you can tell the difference between the two. What we don't want them to do. <laughs> they're keeping these thinking that they're white perch. White perch, I mean. So they're thinking they can keep as many of these as they want because they think they're white perch. Right. Which you can see, I mean, they do look very much alike. But again, this one's got no stripes. So it's got stripes. Cool. Luckily, Casey and Ben uh, got some, uh, got the fish that we needed to tag uh, up the Eno with the shocking boat. And uh, so that was, so we all accomplished what we was after. We needed eight fish to finish out uh, the fish for this point in time. And then they're going to collect some more fish later in the spring as the white bass make their annual spring run up those creeks and they'll get the rest of the fish then and uh, it'll be a bigger concentration of white bass up there now so they wanted to collect samples two different times and uh, you know during during this year hey guys I hope you seen something today that you liked on the video hey you never know where wildlife adventures may wind up so I got to experience something brand new to me today and uh, I wanted to share that with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And hey, you remember, it's a wildlife, and I'll see you on the water.